This is a video tutorial for MJ8 Calc. It's a residential load calculation program based on the Manual J 8th edition. Uh, my name is Kenny Watson. I'm the developer of MJ8 Calc. This is an online version of Manual J and it's used for block loads only and it's to be used in conjunction with Manual S for equipment sizing. It's been formatted uh, for tablets, laptops, and PCs just because the available screen size uh, it's not suitable for uh, phones and the size of the screens that they have. So to begin with, this is the information tab. It'll give you a little bit of information about the uh, program. Uh, a couple of things I might want to point out is the program is set up for automatic calculations. So every time that you make an entry, there could be a slight pause with each entry as the program is crunching the data and this is also dependent upon how uh, fast your internet connection uh, is and the reset button will globally clear everything from the program so you can start a new load calculation so uh, do not press this button unless you're ready to start uh, a new program so the first tab we go to our project data tab here's where you'll enter the uh, your name and the company that you work for uh, so it can be identified by the codes officials that are viewing it so I'll type in my name and we'll put in ABC heating and AC and the project name today this one's going to be for the Fox residence this is an existing home that we're working on today so the next drop down box is where you would put in your design state and city so today we're going to be using Nashville Tennessee but you can use the drop down box just to select the design state and city that's closest to your location and when you do that it'll give you all the defaults uh, out of the book to be using uh, on this section here if you need to override the data just because your local codes may require a different uh, design and, and we'll do that just so you can see the example uh, our winter design is 18 degrees I'm going to change that to 15 degrees and you'll see it shows up red and then our outdoors 92 I'm going to change that to let's say 95 so you'll see that those have been overridden so our home today has a total of 1800 square feet and we have an average ceiling height of 8 feet and that will calculate our total above grade volume of 14,400. This is a three bedroom house. Once again, you can set, select the drop down box to select your bedrooms. Uh, you have three appliance scenarios 1,200, 2,400, and 3,400. This home is suitable for the 2,400 BTU scenario. And you can also add some additional appliances here if you need to. Uh, not sure about the plants on this one so we're going to leave that blank but you would select if they're large medium or small and then the quantity in that box uh, this is an older home so I'm going to change the infiltration evaluation to semi loose uh, it is a one level home we'll leave that box selected our duct work is located in the attic uh, it's a 130 degree attic it's FHA vented a trunk and branch supply grills in the center and the return grill close to the unit with no risers or drops by selecting the drop down you can select any other duct table uh, that you might find in the book it's the duct system configuration is one horizontal system on one level our insulation we're going to change that to R4 and our duct tightness we're going to change that to semi loose here and 100 percent of the duct work is exposed uh, for ventilation we're not going to select anything but if you did you could select the table eight out of the book or if your local codes required air changes per hour or CFM you could select that by the drop down box and enter the air changes or CFM uh, no exhaust and here since our uh, manufacturer's sensible capacity data is, is not adjusted for blower heat so we would leave that uh, answered no our next section will move to the glass 
So here's where you will use the drop down box to select the type of glass. I'm going to use clear glass, double pane, no internal shade, operable, and wood frames. I'm just going to assume all of our glass is the same type. And then I'll go and I'm just going to enter some glass on each direction just to show you how that works. So I'm going to say I've got three feet wide and we'll call them five feet high. Here's that slight delay. Uh, and let's say I've got five. And my overhang adjustment, it projects out one foot, and the distance from the projection to the top of the window is one foot. And we'll go to the west. I'm going to use the same type glass. And we'll say those are three feet. four feet and let's say a quantity of three same overhanger and then on our north side so we've got three feet by four feet So we have four. And you'll notice the overhang is grayed out because any north-facing glass uh, would say shaded all the time. So there's no need to put an entry here. And then finally on the south side, use the same type glass. Let's say this one is three by five. four of those same overhang adjustment okay so that gets our glass entered so we can scroll back up and we can look at our J1 form to verify that all of our information has been transferred to the J1 form we do not have any skylights so we're going to skip over to the doors and walls so we have one door. It's a it's a nice door on the on the front of the house, a wood panel door, and net square feet. If there's any glass in that door, you would figure that in the glass section, and you'd have the net square feet of door. Here it's just a solid door. We have 20 square feet, and we have a door going into our garage that's a metal with a polystyrene core, and it's 20 square feet. Same thing with our walls. If there's any, you deduct the glass out of the walls and put the net square feet. So here we're going to use uh, R11 cavity with a R2 sheathing and brick. Frame walls, wood studs. Now on this, and I actually have 1,440 net square feet, but uh, the drop-down box is in increments of 25, so just use the one that closely matches it. So uh, we'll use 1450 for our net square feet on that. Once again, look over at your J1 form. You can see that we've added our two doors and our wall section, and that's been transferred over. Next, we'll go to our ceilings. This is going to have that. Remember, we chose a 130-degree attic for our duct work. And this particular example is going to have R30 insulation, no radiant barrier. And once again, net square feet, you would deduct any skylights uh, out of the ceiling. So here we had that 1,800 square foot house. So we'd have 1,800 square feet of ceiling area. Look back over to our J1 form. We'll see that's been transferred over. Let's go to our floors. We're going to have floors over an enclosed crawl space for this example. There's no insulation on the walls, but we do have uh, R19 in the floor. Floor insulation here. And we have 1,800 square feet of exposed floor. 
go back to our J1 form, like we can see that our floor area has been transferred over. Uh, the bottom section, it was covered when we entered our project data, so all that information has been transferred over based on what we put uh, above. So you can see our, our total latent load is 5,102, our heat loss is 46,970, and our heat gain is 54,376. So uh, this load took us about 10 minutes to run. It's a very easy uh, program to use. Uh, I would appreciate any feedback that you could give me if you would visit www.calcunow.com. Uh, you can give me any comments or suggestions to improve the program. Uh, thanks for uh, looking at the demo today, and I hope to hear from you soon.